and we are back to drawing more clan gen cats. If you're just starting on this video, I would suggest going back and watching year one of Splash Clan, which is on my channel, and I'll link it in the description as well. This was, oh, it was definitely an interesting year for this clan, and I am really excited to get into it, so I won't waste any more time and get on with the cats. Janet Starr is still leader and had a bit of a rough year. First thing that happened to her was that she had her litter of kits, who she named Torn Kit, Icy Kit, and Jellyfish Kit, who is my favorite. I said last time that it was entirely possible that the warrior Light Spots was the father since he had a crush on her, but no, that is not the case, and the other parent is a cat from outside the clans. I have decided that Splash Clan exists in the same universe as Dead Clan and Heather Clan, and that leads to a lot of really interesting stuff. Before the clans could settle down at the lake and become fully formed, they had to chase off a group of rogues that were affiliated with Blood Clan, and it's my little theory that the father of her kits is one of those rogues, and she's keeping his identity a secret. On top of that, tensions are very high with their neighbor, Hayes Clan, who lives on Shadow Clan's old territory. Hayes Clan's leader keeps accusing Splash Clan cats of trespassing and stealing prey, but Gannet Star refuses to believe that's true. She feels the need to prove that not only is she strong, but her clan is strong, and she desperately wants to go to war with Hayes Clan to prove this, but even she knows that she shouldn't force her clanmates to fight on her own behalf. She feels down, overworked, and feels as though being leader is crushing her. If she can't prove that she's strong, what else is she supposed to do? The thing that kept her going throughout the year though is her kits. She knows she needs to stay strong for them and realizes that even though she wants nothing more than to fight Hayes Clan, her kits are more important to her. And besides, she may not be able to take down her enemies in Hayes Clan with her claws, but she can do whatever she wants with her words. And so she's grown closer to both Brackenshade and Lightgale as she always seems to go to them to gossip about the other clans. Bracken Shade, just like Gannet Star, I think had a bit of a rough year as well. He sprained his paw twice this year because he wasn't paying attention to his surroundings, which he also happened to do last year, multiple times. <laughs> I've also played ahead a year and that's shown me that this is just something he's always doing, mostly because he gets so stuck in his own thoughts that he doesn't pay attention to what's going on around him. I think he also doesn't really care that much about his own well-being as much as he does for others because for one, he's always hurting himself and really does not seem to care, and two, he thinks he can take on a badger by himself. No, Bracken Shade. No, you cannot. Do not do that. <laughs> As shocking as it may look based on his appearance, he actually has a lot of self-doubt. Sure, he's a fierce and abrasive guy on the outside, but he's not as harsh on the inside, which has made him wonder if Gannet Star only picked him to be deputy because of those external qualities he has. He does his job perfectly fine as deputy, but he wonders if he's not actually as important as he once thought he was. Brackenshade wants nothing more than to be taken seriously, not judged, and appreciated for who he really is. This year, he received his second apprentice, Jellyfish Paw, who I'll get to later. As I mentioned before, with Gannet Star, she goes to him often to gossip about the other clans. While she's definitely more fond of him than he is of her, he likes her in a different way. He feels very safe and secure around her, and strangely enough, it's because she's so intimidating. It's because of how scary and strong she is. He hopes the clan will be perceived that way and thus stay out of harm's way. Weirdly enough, he's also developed a crush on Longpool, who I talked about last time. I feel very iffy on this. <laughs> But, I mean, he never had feelings for the guy when he was an apprentice, and these feelings only developed once Longpool was a full warrior, and on top of that, there's only a 26-month age gap between the two, and, you know, who's got a bigger age gap? Like Gale and Jade Zinnia. So, if something does end up happening here, I'm not gonna prevent it from happening, but, uh, I don't think they'd be my favorite couple. <laughs> Compared to the last two, Light Gale had a pretty chill year. There really isn't a whole lot for me to say about him besides his relationships. His relationship with Jade Zinnia grew, and they've become even closer than they were before. Light Gale loves Jade Zinnia more than anything, and there's no cat in the clan that can rival their relationship. He admires Jade Zinnia and feels safe and secure around him, but there's been a slight problem with Jade Zinnia this year, which I'll talk about with him. Aside from Jade Zinnia, the only cat he's really close to in the clan currently is Snapfern. The two have a pretty cute friendship. Moving on to Jade Zinnia, and I uh, remember how last time I mentioned how I thought Snapfern was the lazy one in the clan. Uh, yeah, that's a, I'm, I'm retconning this. Um, it's actually Jade Zinnia. He he is the lazy one. <laughs> <laughs> not Snapfern. The main issue he had this year, I think, stemmed from him getting so comfortable in the clan that he just started slacking off, and he just he would just spend all of his time in the medicine den with Lightgale. It got to the point that he started going out to hunt, not for the clan, but just for himself. This caused Gannet Star to go and confront him about it, 
and all the while, Light Gale awkwardly eavesdropped on the conversation. Everyone loves Light Gale. He's super popular and is close buddies with both Snapfern and Longpool. But basically, everyone agreed that he was in the wrong here regardless. And what made it worse is that he stood his ground and refused to apologize. He was like this until later in the year when he got sick with White Cough, and then right after he recovered, he got his leg stuck in a two-leg trap. Both of these experiences made him realize that he was in the wrong, and what makes this even better is at the end of this year, Jade, Zinnia, and Light Gale are now expecting a litter of kits. As I mentioned before, I have played ahead, and I am so excited for you to see their kits in year three. They are adorable, and I love them. Snapfern also had a bit of a rough year too. I think the main issue she had this year was that she was starting to regret becoming a clan cat. Originally, she was likely a rogue or a loner who lived her entire life on her own and joined Splash Clan thinking that living in a community would be better, and it generally is. However, there are some things about being independent that she misses, which is causing her to wonder if clan life is really for her. Thankfully, Snapfern has plenty of friends in the clan. However, she only feels like she can go to one for help, and that's Jade Zinnia. There's nothing wrong with her other friends, although she feels weird about going to Longpool since he was her apprentice, Light Spots is Light Spots, and she avoids talking about this to Brackenshade and Lightgale because they're so close to Ganet Star, and she made a rude comment to her after overhearing her troubles, so she avoids them all. So far, she hasn't gotten much help from Jade Zinnia, but just being able to talk to someone is making her feel better. In the end, she knows things will be okay, but she's still unsure of what she wants. Two more things about her. She received her second apprentice this year, and that apprentice is Icy Paw, who I'll talk about in more detail later. As for her relationships, she's actually developed a bit of a crush on both Brackenshade and Light Spots, which is an interesting combination. <laughs> Light Spots is still Light Spots. He did absolutely nothing this year, but I can talk about some of his relationships. The cat he's closest to in the clan is Jade Zinnia, who he's really close friends with, and aside from that, he's developed crushes on Snapfern and Light Gale, and he still has his crush on Ganet Star. The only major thing that happened to him this year was that he was caught in a two-leg trap, which gave him a leg injury, but he escaped and made a full recovery. Sweet Speckle also had a pretty unexciting year. The major thing that happened to her this year was that she was attacked by a dog, which gave her a tail injury, but she fully recovered from that. Later, while guarding the camp with Thunder Isle, the two started a snowball fight that the entire clan ended up being involved with, which I think is really, really cute. Aside from those two things, her year was pretty uneventful. She's become even closer with Light Gale, and she has the strongest platonic love for any cat in the clan. Her platonic love for this guy is entirely maxed out, so she must really like him, which is adorable. She's still got a crush on Thunder Isle and Brackenshade, and can I just just say, I have no idea what it is about Brack and Shade, but oh my god, everybody is in love with this guy, which is so funny to me.
Thunder Rail had a pretty interesting year. Not as exciting, but uh, definitely interesting. One thing I'd like to point out is that well over half the clan this year, including Thunder Isle at one point, had the they feel a sense of dread status, and some of them had this multiple times. And considering how things have gone in year three, I definitely think that something is building up here. Something big. Moving on, she was injured twice this year, once when she fell out of a tree but was only bruised, and later she was successfully able to fight off a hawk while on patrol, which resulted in her gaining the scar on the chest, which as I'm recording this, I'm realizing I forgot on her design. Oh, uh, it's because you can't see it. That's why it's not there. That's, yep, you can't see it because it, it, it's just the perspective of this drawing. You can't see it. I definitely did not forget to draw that. Um, anyways, <laughs> as I mentioned before with Weed Speckle, the two of them started a snowball fight, which ended up including all the cats in Splash Clan, which is absolutely adorable and I need to draw this scene at some point. In terms of her relationships with the cats from her clan, she's not really close to anyone in particular, but she still has a bit of a crush on Weed Speckle. Interestingly though, twice this year, she had the status of she hopes Mintshade will tell her a new story. Mintshade? As in the morally dubious Star Clan guide Mintshade? Mintshade as in probably got Gannet Star to her position as leader Mintshade? This lady? Is, is Mintshade visiting Thunder Isle in her dreams? If so, why? There's something going on here, I, I just know it. What makes me think that even more is going on is once again she had the is definitely plotting something status. So what are you doing, Thunder Isle? What is your deal? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, out of complete nowhere, in the final month of this year, Thunder Isle announced that she's expecting a litter of kits. She hasn't moved into the nursery yet, since it's still pretty early, but I think it's really sweet how both her kits, as well as Jade Zinni and Light Gales, will be able to grow up together since they'll only be a month apart in age. Longpool, who you might recognize as Longpaw if you watched year one, is now a warrior. He was promoted to a warrior and honored for his determination as soon as this year started alongside the birth of Gannet Star's litter of kits. Speaking of Gannet Star's kits, he was actually given one as an apprentice, that being Tornpaw. The main thing I've realized about this guy is, man, he's such a sweetheart. Maybe a bit oblivious, but a sweetheart nonetheless. He's just a playful guy who loves babies and would love to have kittens of his own someday. I have a bit of a theory about him though. Twice this year, he caught the scent of an enemy warrior. He's been curious about the other clans, and he wants to have kits. On top of that, Sage Peak and Star Clan had the status of he knows what Longpool's secret is. So what is Longpool's secret? I think he's in a half clan relationship with the cat from Haze Clan and is keeping it secret because he doesn't want Gannet Star, aka Haze Clan's biggest hater, to find out. No idea if anything will come of this but I think that's for sure what's going on with him right now. Later in the year, he was pulled out to sea by a tide but was rescued, although he had water in his lungs and spent the last few months of the year stuck in the medicine den. He spent his time there helping Lightgale to collect more herbs and organize them, tossing moss balls around and making up silly songs for everyone else to sing along to, but he's recovered now. Remember earlier how he mentioned Bracken Jade had developed a crush on him? Well, he developed a small crush on him too. Like I said previously, I don't think anything is going to actually happen between these two though. And finally, I get to talk about Gannet Star's kits. The oldest is Tornpaw, who, as I mentioned before, is Longpool's apprentice. As a kit, he definitely wanted to be just like his mom. He'd boss his siblings around and make himself the clan leader in all their games that they'd play. Him being bossy and noisy slowly evolved into him being super strict with his siblings and making sure that they're always following the rules, or more accurately, always listening to their mom. Later in the year, while on a hunting patrol with his mentor, he mistook a hare for a rabbit and it scratched his eyes, causing him to be stuck in the medicine den for months with his injury. This injury made him very insecure and made him worry that he was disappointing his clan, but in the end, he made a full recovery.
Icy Paw is the next of Gannet Star's kits, and she's Snap Fern's apprentice. There's one thing in the world that Icy Paw loves more than anything, and that's food. <laughs> Basically, every other status in the game connects to her craving some sort of food, her eating, or her regretting not eating, which I think is a really cute character trait. As a kit, she loved attention and wanted nothing more to be at the center of everything, which mostly meant she just wanted to be coddled by everyone. As an apprentice, her personality changed from attention-seeking to childish, and I think her personality really clashed with Snap Ferns, since there was at one point where her status was just about how she didn't want to go on patrol with her. Not that I think either of them disliked each other, but they just couldn't make as much of a connection as Snap Fern did with Longpool. And the last kind of Splash Clan is Jellyfish Paw, and oh, oh my god, I love her! I love everything about her! Her name, her personality, her design, she's so cute! Anyways, anyways, she's the youngest of Gannet Star's kits and was easily the most troublesome of the trio. At one point when she was a kit, she tried sneaking out of camp but was immediately found by Light Gale. Light Gale told her that he'd keep quiet and cover for her, and just as she was about to get out of camp, she tripped, fell on her face, and bruised herself. Himself, right in front of him. Lykiel then turned around and loudly told everyone in the clan what had just happened. I don't think he was actually going to stay quiet about her sneaking out. He was probably just going to turn around and tell Gannet Star her silly little kitten was trying to break out of camp as soon as she was gone, but I think the way this played out was a whole lot funnier. She was later apprenticed to Bracken Shade and she went from being a troublesome kit to a fierce apprentice. Even though she desperately wanted a mentor who wasn't boring, and uh, let's be real here, Bracken Shade is a pretty boring guy, I think the two bonded pretty well. Not as well as he did before with Thunder Isle, but bonded nonetheless. The main relationship she has in the clan is with her own mother. She's closely bonded with her mother, and I think Gannet Star kind of favorites her over Torn Paw and Icy Paw, but tries not to let it show. Gannet Star and her daughter share a familial bond that no other cat in the clan can even come close to, and I think their bond is really cute. No cats died this year, so there's no new Star Clan cats, meaning that this is the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed seeing how Splash Clan has progressed into its second year, and I'll be back with another video next week.